Hi, this is Chris. Today I'm going to be working on the inside of my new garden journal. I thought I would show you first how I finished the cover. So I continued the theme of vines that were on the original artwork and extended them out and put little flowers. I found the words garden book and I put little um, decoration around that too and around the spine with the butterflies and around the back cover. So I'm going to um, pick out some papers for this and I found quite a few, I found quite a stack of papers to use in this book so I have a good choice. And this is my stack. So these are printouts from, let's see, I wrote it down here. This is called um, Shabby Chic, and it's by Secret Helper. Shabby Chic Journal Kit by Secret Helper. And I thought these would make pretty dividers in my book. And I tried to print them out borderless which my printer does, but they're not 8.5 by 11, so I had a hard time fitting them, but they'll make them work. And here's an example. In, these are both printed on Epson uh, presentation paper. And this one is printed at uh, regular, and then this was a high contrast image. So it's the same image, but just the settings on my printer. This came out so much prettier but I'm sure it used a lot more ink. And this one I, I didn't get printed quite right. So I have to work with those, but I this is nice and heavy, this presentation paper. I printed out another one. So I might use those for dividers. And then these are the uh, other pieces that come with it. This is an envelope. I was thinking of putting this on the inside front cover just as a pocket like that. I wouldn't wouldn't need that. And these are some of the fussy cuts from that um, digital. And then these are from Nick the Booksmith and they're seed labels. I thought those would be nice to use in a garden journal. This is from Eclectic Eggplant and it's fall images so it's uh, mostly apples, apple pie, and some fall leaves. And this is um, from Gail Augustinelli's granddaughter, Abby. So I printed out these tags that she designed. I thought those were really cute. Printed out two of them. And then she had these little uh, sayings about the garden, which um, they were full page. And so I just printed them out small and I can use them somewhere. Uh, to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow by Audrey Hepburn and how lovely the silence of growing things. So those were designed by Abby. Um, these were I found in the public domain and so I, I picked out the sunflowers because I have sunflowers in my garden and I just like that little garden gate. That was a, a kind of a low resolution image so I couldn't get it any bigger than that. And then I accidentally printed this one out full size. And then I don't remember where I got this. It's on heavy cardstock. These are from the torn page, Amateur Etymologist Butterfly Ladies 1. And if you look closely, you can see that each butterfly is a lady. Look, they look like they're from the 1920s. I thought those were really cute. I have this um, Mary Inglebright envelope or stationery. You know, it's, it's an envelope that's been cut. And I thought I could use that little scrap. Uh, this is my own uh, digital kit called Antique Seed Catalog Covers. This is where I got the uh, words garden book. And these are um, vintage seed catalog covers front and back. So I can make some of these into little booklets or I can just use one side as, as an image. And this is where I use the strip down the center of my book. And this is where I got the image for the front of my book. And 
here's more seed uh, catalog covers. And then these are some of the pages. Then I made some pages just for my journal. So I have um, a journaling page. So this is says my garden journal. I printed them back to back. And I printed them, since this is a loose leaf binder, I printed them so they can be cut down the middle and then there's space to punch the holes. And then I have one page for my garden photos because I like to print out little pictures uh, from my garden through the year. And then I have a page, Garden Plans. There's some things I want to do to um, extend my garden and to protect it from the deer. I need to put up some new uh, taller fencing. And so as long as I'm going to put up some fencing, I might um, actually expand the garden size. So here I can lay out plans and then I can, I have several different areas in um, my house. I have the front planters on the front of the house and then beside my driveway I have a place where I'm putting in uh, wildflowers. And then in the back I have my garden that I'm talking about fencing and then I also have some um, container plants on my patio. I have a couple of those. And then I have here a place where I can have um, record purchases that I made, how much they cost and where I got them. And then I also like to keep track of the temperature and, and my laser printer got kind of messy there. So I have those. I have some other papers to use. I found these little index cards. I don't know if you can see them. But they're punch-out index cards. I think I got those at the thrift store or the um, rummage sale. I have a couple of pages of Edith Holden. I have a couple of pages from uh, England is a Garden. Another beautiful watercolor garden theme book. I have two pieces of wallpaper. This actually was in my bathroom many years ago and I happen to have um, this one piece that pulled off after I was getting ready to change the decor and it just pulled right off so I kept that. Another piece of um, wallpaper, I'm not sure where I got that. And then just some bits and scraps of paper and magazine pictures. I don't actually grow roses, I have one wild rose but I don't um, I don't grow roses but grow, roses are a common theme in garden images. Here are some little um, journaling cards from um, Graphics 45. I have here some junk journal pages. I don't know if I will use these. I have some um, eco printed. I'd really like to use that. I'm not sure. I've got some graph paper too. So I may do a mix of that or I may actually uh, tea dye these because it's laser printed and so they can be tea dyed without distorting. So I might try doing that just so it's not stark white against tea dye. Then I have all these other paper pads to choose from. I've got um, this is Country Road by Paper Studio and it's got old wood and brick with um, floral images printed over the top, burlap, different things like that. And then I have this um, lavender. This is by Prima. And it has all kinds of um, gardening and butterflies and mostly roses and a lot of purple. I'm not sure if this will actually fit in with my decor. And then I have some other um, papers here. This one is uh, Marsh Flower. And this is by Recollections. Of possibilities that I can use. I have a choice. I can divide by the seasons. For instance, in my last two garden journals I divided by the season. This is two years, so I've got winter, spring, summer, 
fall, winter, spring, summer, and fall. You can see here, this is where I like to put in uh, pictures. And then I journal. I just put a little paragraph for each week. At the end of the week, I just sum up what I did in my garden. And here are some more pictures. These are actually some pictures from a long time ago I came across. And when my uh, cactus bloomed so well after the nice winter, I put a picture in there. And here's how I would mark out and plan my garden. So I have a choice of doing winter, spring, summer, fall like I have done in the past four years. Or I could do one section just for journaling, one section for planning, one section for photos. And that's what I like about having a loose leaf binder is that I'll be able to change that around if I decide. Well, after working with my first printouts and the trouble I had to get them to fit on the page, I've been playing around with my borderless options on my printer and I found a way to finally do it so that I got a border all the way to the edge. And what I had to do was go into Photoshop and make a background the same similar color as the background to these pages and then reduce the pages to fit with about an eighth inch of that background showing and then my printer printed it. When I Before that I just had trouble even though it says it's borderless and it showed all the borders all the edges on my uh, monitor it tends to enlarge the image to push it out to the border so once I figured that out, having printed all these pages on my good paper, <laughs> I'm printing them over again. So you'll hear the printer in the background. And this is how they came out, and this makes me happier. My happy camper. So, start that whole thing over again. So this needs to be five and a half. And there. This I could turn this around so that the good edge is on the outside. And I'll wait for the next ones to print. And meanwhile, I'll get my template and go around the corners so sometimes it's worth figuring out how to make it the way you want it so you don't have to uh, always regret when you're working on your project, when you're working in your journal and, and you regret that you didn't take the time to try to make things work the way you want them. And it's frustrating. Especially if you don't have a lot of experience with the applications. I do have some experience with Photoshop as I worked as a graphic artist in the advertising department of the newspaper and I didn't have to do a lot of really high-end Photoshop um, images but I had to do enough to kind of learn my way around what it will do Okay, I have two dividers, 
and I'm running out of ink. Well, looks like I ran out of red. So we'll just continue on with what we have for now. Well, the ones that didn't print well won't go to waste. I can make my tabs out of this. So, get my tab punch. So that's a lot of tabs I can use on this journal or I can use on future journals. Oh, what can I do with these other misprints? Got this pretty one with the birds. This pretty one. idea for this. So let's see. Alright, I have made a giant tuck spot. Now, these little birds are cute. If I were ambitious, I would cut away all this background and put a piece of transparent uh, tissue paper on there and make something out of it, but I don't think I have the the patience or the skill to cut out those tiny little branches. I could just cut out the bigger branches, but I don't think so. We have some more up here, but I've already cut that same, that same one. So I think I will go ahead and cut some of my journaling pages and we can start to fill up this book a little bit. And then I think we'll be done for today until I get some more printer ink. Here's a little tip. If your blade is getting dull and it tends to catch on the edge of the paper, start in the middle and go both ways. It's less likely to rip. So 
I'm turning these all so that the wide margin is on the left because that's where I will we'll punch the holes. And I wish this was a three hole because I have a three hole punch, but I don't have a six hole punch. So I will punch these off camera and then we'll um, put them in the book. I've got these punched, and like I said earlier, I could do a section just for plans, just for photos, just for journaling, or I could mix it up. I could do for each month. I wouldn't need 12 months because I only garden March through September, maybe October, so I can... I can make for each month. I might have to round these corners. So I could put in a garden journal. And then I could put in a garden purchase. And garden stats. And garden photos. If I'm missing anything, journal, photos, plans. Plans are important. I think I'll put the plans after the photos. Okay, so there's the start of my garden book, or my garden journal, loose leaf binder. I have a pocket in here where I can shove things. I can, I'll put tabs on here when I decide what, what I want, and then I have my journaling page. I have my photo page. I have my garden plan ideas, my garden stats and my garden purchases. So I hope that gives you some ideas on what you can do with an old art book, an old art instruction book, and make a pretty little garden journal or a journal for anything. Thanks for watching and have a great day crafting. Bye bye!